Bars is back. Sand and Oh God. What's up with you? Hip hop uncensored is the vibe, so subscribe. Hip hop uncensored is the vibe, so subscribe. Oh God, driving Sam and riding passenger side, and you heard it out the. What the powers that be are directing them to do, because if they don't do that, they're threatened with, you know, uh, obscurity. I, you know, we're not going to release your music. We're going to put you on shelf. You, you know, um, we'll keep you signed. Um, we won't let you out of your contract. And so you won't be able to record anywhere else. So if you want to be a recording artist, you're either going to record the music that we tell you to record, mm -hmm. or you're not going to record anywhere until your contract is up. And God only knows when that is, because uh, we want, we're going to exercise every option and then some. Yep. Now you mentioned um, Africa Bambata. Uh, the, the last, over the last couple of years, I should say, there's been a lot of people that have been coming out on him saying that he may have been doing some stuff, you know, um, with men and little boys, you know, uh -huh. back in the day. Did you ever hear anything about that coming up? And did you hear about it recently? Um, coming up um, early, early on, I, I would say in the, in the late 70s, um, I was one of the very few people uh, from my neighborhood who could go to Bronx River Projects and not get robbed. Mm -hmm. uh, and that was because one of my OGs, um, Spider, rest in peace, uh, he treated me like I was his little brother and he wouldn't allow any of the dudes from Bronx River to rob me. <laughs> so because of that, um, whenever I would go to Bronx River, I would go there, you know, uh, like, like, mind you, dudes from Bronx River would come around my neighborhood, Lambert houses, and rob everything and everybody. And the reason why they didn't rob me and my man Davey Waters and his older brother Steve was, one, because I was friends with Davey Waters and Steve, and they were from Bronx River, and two, because Spider was my OG. So I would go to Bronx River during... Uh, times when Bambada would be doing block parties and stuff like that. And um, so I witnessed some things uh, after a few uh, jams when Bambada would be packing up his equipment. Uh, one time I vividly recall um, a few of the Gestapo crew, one of his most feared um, groups of, of, of guys from from the Black Spades, mm -hmm. uh, uh, they were running up behind him while he was packing up his equipment and they were smacking his ass and palming it as though he were a woman. And his response was very womanly, stop, stop, like, you know, like a woman. And so at that point, uh, I then knew um, that he was uh, a homosexual at best. But I mean, it was never my place to, you know, expose that publicly because, you know, homosexuality is not a crime. Uh, last I checked, you know, it's just a, a matter of preference. I, you know, I'm, I'm a straight dude, you know, uh, he's a homo. And so we obviously don't have that, you know, heterosexual, uh, heterosexuality in common right. or homosexuality in common. Um, but uh, I respected him because of his contribution to the culture, and he never came at me like that. I do know uh, a few people who he did uh, approach in that manner, and um, unsuccessfully, um, and they shared that with me. They did not publicly out him, uh, but others that he did that to, from, you know, uh, as we see now, have and yeah. um, did I know about them uh, during the time when they were going through that abuse? No, absolutely not. Did I know about uh, that? You know, he was uh, uh, imposing these sexual improprieties on on young boys uh, during that time. Well, because I was a young boy at that time, 
it didn't dawn on me at that time that what he was, he wasn't a pedophile, or a pedophile at that time because he was around the same age as us, maybe a, maybe a couple of years older, you know what I mean? So at that time in the 70s, it would not have been considered as pedophilia, it was just homosexuality. But mm -hmm. moving forward, you know, today, uh, I guess if he's, you know, engaging in, you know, sexual activity with, you know, young men who are, well, in, in New York, uh, the consent, the consenting sexual age is 17. Mm. So, so if he's engaging in any sexual activities with any, any persons, male or female under the age of 17, then that is considered pedophilia. But other than that, you know, um, I, I would imagine that once they turn 17, that that is a consenting age. And so you're not liable uh, for any legal recourse as a result of that. Yeah, well said. Now, there's a lot of rumors going on, and we appreciate anybody's perspective that has been around during that time and kind of has a perspective on that. One mm -hmm. person that took backlash was the legendary KRS-One who seemingly, and I'm power phrasing, I don't want to say defended it, but almost kind of made, I don't, I don't know when, I don't know how I want to word it, but he pretty much just said, let's look past that and just look at the man for what he's done in hip hop. What do you think about that? Well, um, I think that that's really, really uh, uh, insensitive to, to the people who were victimized, you know, um, I think, you know, that that doesn't really uh, instill the confidence in victims, um, whether they were victimized by, you know, Africa Bambada or whomever, mm -hmm. um, anyone that was privy to the message that KRS-One conveyed to the public at large as a result of Bambada's uh, actions, um, to me, that that implies that you have no no sympathy, no empathy for these people who sustained this life altering um, and heinous uh, act. You know, I, I don't think that that was cool, and um, I don't know, you know, the the justification. I don't know the the reasoning behind it. Um, I have my own personal uh, thoughts as to the reasoning, um, but it's not something that I care to share publicly uh, because um, uh, I, I don't want anyone to to accuse me of, of you know being a hater or, or being homophobic or or any of that. Um, but I do have uh, a moral compass, and um, and I do have uh, I do have a conscience, and so uh, when I see people sustaining, um, you know, such such uh, you know uh, heinous like like when I see people going through these things. And they they come out of it, you know, affected. Um, and then you know the people who are the the culprits, um, you know, they they act as though you know uh, they're innocent or they don't have any kind of sympathy for for the people who sustain, you know these crimes at their hands, yeah. um, to me, uh, it says something about the, the, the culprit, you know, Bambada, and it says something about KRS-One. Um, you know, uh, you, you might have to look a little deeper to, to recognize it because, you know, a lot of us are, Jaded by the the smoking mirrors that uh, that are the culture, you know, the cultural backdrop uh, that we 
that many of us wear every day. And so a lot of us aren't being held accountable for the things that we do in everyday life because of the fact that um, we've contributed, you know, in such a profound way culturally. So, but to me, that doesn't, that doesn't, uh, you know, negate us from, from being uh, accountable. 